sometimes you can always call the acceleration of gravity negative if we call down negative. Remember, the positive or negative go with direction, okay, not with speeding up or slowing down. But if you're slowing down, then your acceleration will always be the opposite sign of the direction you're going. So if you're going in a negative direction and slowing down, then the acceleration would be positive, right? But in terms of acceleration of gravity, we always say gravity is always pulling us down, so we can always call acceleration of gravity negative. Except sometimes I don't. Sometimes we don't. And the times we don't is when we're dealing with something falling. So if something's falling, instead of calling both the distance and the acceleration negative, we just call them both positive. We multiply by negative one, like both sides of an equation by negative one, and we can call the acceleration negative, okay? And then the other confusing part, and we'll go through this in working problems. The other confusing part is when we have something that goes up in the air and comes back down, right? That it's easiest sometimes, and we're not gonna, after this chapter, we're not gonna be finished with it. It's not, oh, now we can be finished with acceleration and gravity. We're gonna be doing this from now till March, dealing with this in some form or another is that it's easier just to deal with the, the one half of the motion, either up or down. And I'm gonna, let me give you an example of how to do it two different ways. Uh, and I had really, honestly, I didn't think much about school last week until just now. And so in my mind, I'm saying something and I'm thinking other things in my mind. So I hope it works out. So let's suppose you throw something in the air and you catch it uh, whatever, eight seconds later, we'll make it. So we know that under normal conditions, we kind of ignore wind resistance. Uh, we're gonna do it for short distances. If it was something that went up in the air for you know, four minutes, that'd be kind of hard to ignore wind resistance. But for eight seconds, you know, on a windy day like it was, you know, we had some windy days last week, uh, or at least I hear you did. And um, so we, Eight seconds is probably enough to blow something one way, one direction or the other. But we're gonna ignore wind resistance, which we do a lot in physics. We just have to because we haven't talked about any of that yet. So I know that it goes up for four seconds and down for four seconds, okay? Now, I can, the, the two questions you're gonna get is how high did it go, right? And how fast was it, right? Those are your two questions. How high did it go and how fast was it going when it left your hand? Well, one of the assumptions we make is that it's going just as fast when it leaves your hand as it is when you catch it. And we have to assume, for us right now, we're assuming that you release it and catch it at the same height. There will be times when we don't, where you might catch it you know, half a meter below where you were released. But for our purposes, we're, it's going up and coming down, catching and releasing at the same height. All right, so um, we, we know them automatically, and we can just agree that we will always make acceleration of gravity negative, and we're gonna call it G from now on. I don't know if you did that last week, but G now will always stand for negative 9.8 meters per second squared. A lot of places they just round it off to 10, but we're gonna uh, use 9.8. And we can call it negative as long as we always understand that down is negative, okay? So the easiest thing to do is find the velocity of either releasing or catching. So if I drop it, if, if up here's the top, here's where I release the ball or whatever it is, and it falls down here, and this took four seconds, right? Everybody understand that concept that it go, it's gonna go up for four and down for four. I would say then at the top, the initial velocity is zero, right? Then the final velocity is what I wanna find at the bottom, okay? And I know that the acceleration of gravity is 9.8, negative. It, and we can always call it negative. But if I ask, well, let me, let me back up and finish this problem. 
So somewhere we have the formula for final velocity is acceleration times time, right? Uh, I think the most difficult part of any of this stuff, since we're just starting off, is how do I know what formula to use, right? And we're not going to be, some of you will pick up on it pretty quickly, but you know, in one year time, or half a year, whatever time we're going to spend on this stuff, uh, I don't know that we're going to do enough problems where it just automatically comes to your mind, right? How many of you play an instrument? Anybody in band play an instrument? Okay, it just automatically, you, if you say play C, you know what note it is. You see the note and your fingers just automatically go. I play guitar and I don't know if we're going to have enough experience for that. Does that make sense? So anyway, we're going to use that final velocity is acceleration times time plus initial velocity, but that's zero, so we don't worry about it, right? So final velocity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times four seconds. And 9.8 times four is 39.2, is that right? Okay, notice I have negative, correct? And when I do this, sometimes I just don't even worry about the negatives because the question would be, what is the initial velocity? What is the velocity when you release it? Well, when I release it, it's a positive velocity, right? So if you'd write down negative 39.2 as your initial velocity, I'd have to call that wrong because we're, gonna, we're going up. So a lot of times, I, when I'm working these problems by myself or working them for you or working them in a, you know, for a key, for a worksheet, I'm just gonna do the positive part of this and even call 9.8 positive because it's in the same direction as we're moving. And I know I want a positive velocity because I'm asking what's the initial velocity upward. But then it's just going to be, you know, if I don't put the negative in there, it's just going to be positive 39.2. So I don't know if that confused you more. I'm kind of confused right now. And that, but I get one thumbs up. But do you understand that the, the point is, when does the negative 9.8 matter and when doesn't it? In this case, I can, we can always agree to say it's always going to be gravity is always going to be negative 9.8, always. Just understand that sometimes you might get a negative answer and you have, you're going to have to make it positive depending on what the question is. So if the question is what was the velocity when you released it, or speed, because we know it's up, then it would be a positive 39.2 meters per second upward, right? And the velocity, the up is given by the positive part. Now the next question is, how high does it go, right? Agreed? And we can do that um, a couple different ways. All right, one way, I actually, in this I don't think we can. Um, I could use this, right? The height is 1 half AT squared plus VIT. Where T is what? It's one, is it 4 or 8 seconds? In this case. Michael? 4 seconds, right? Because we just want to find its height. So here's, here's where I, I play around with the signs a little bit more. Suppose that we didn't know the initial velocity. Because right now we're getting the initial velocity when we go up, right? The initial upward velocity is 39.2. So if I did it with this, knowing that this is 39.2, I would take 1 half times negative 9.8, right? Times 4 squared plus 39.2 times 4 seconds, right? That, that would be what I'd have to do. Everyone agree with that? Jacob, good with that? But that's too much work. Yes, ma'am? I thought the I was zero. Okay. What do I have here for my acceleration? Negative 9.8, right? My initial velocity when I throw it up in the air is 39.2. I'm not talking about dropping it now. Okay, this is where it gets confusing, right? I'm not talking about dropping it, I'm talking about going up. 
And I'm doing this, and I'm gonna say, that's too much work, let's do it a different way, then we'll come back to, yes, it is zero, okay? Is that what you were gonna ask, Pat? I was just gonna ask you to do the same thing as this. Yeah. I mean, how far it drops is the same as how far it goes up, right? Agree? So here's where I take liberties with that. So I have to work that out, whatever that turns out to be. I don't know if anybody did it. This would be 9.8 times 8, and that's 39. It's going to be a positive number, right? But Thad was saying, and, and McKenna was saying, you know, what happens if we just look at how far it drops? Because if, if we just look at how far it drops, then VI is zero, right? So I'm trying to find the height, which is the distance. Well, the height is also equal to the distance it fell, right? The distance that the ball or whatever it is falls, right? And in that case, initial velocity is zero. So in that case, all I'm gonna need is this. So my times four squared. But again, this is gonna give me a negative number, right? It's gonna give me a negative number. Um, it's, but if I wanna know how high, the height is positive, I'll just have to make it positive. So that's, for this reason and for that reason, the, the only times that I would maybe ignore the negative on the 9.8. I want one more example. So anyway, whatever this is, what's one half of 9.8 times 16? So 4.9 times 16, we do 4.9 a lot. Uh, 5 times 16 is 80, 78.4, I don't know. What is it? Put it. Um, now, don't think, and it's actually negative, but we want to know how high it goes, and high is always positive. I'm gonna call it a positive. So in these cases where I give you how long something's in the air, I always, go with you know how fast is it going when it hits the ground. I always look at the falling part because I can call initial velocity zero, right? If I try to figure out how high it went, then I, I can't, I have to find initial velocity first. But I, I've done this problem, so many, you know, sometimes when you do things a lot, you remember. Like you don't have to think about riding a horse, right? Oh yeah, it's just, it's there, muscle memory. Know, this was I've done these kind of problems so many times that it's there. It's, I'd rather know how to ride a horse than make physics problems. Okay, I don't know if that that helped. 